think we need to thank God right now that He spared so many people from danger this past weekend. He was, he was protecting lots of people. We give Him the glory for that. Can we just thank Him right now? Father, we thank You for what You did, how You protected Your people here in this community. And God, just help us to come together uh, to pull it back together. In Your name, in Jesus' name, amen. I believe you gave sight to the blind. I believe that the dead came to life. I believe there were wonders and signs, and you're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there are scars in your hands. That your goodness is good without end. You'll never change. I will tell of your wonders, sing of your grace. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always. Your mercy is mighty age after age and all generations will bow down and praise the lord is faithful yesterday now and always always i believe you will come in the clouds i believe you are here even now in your presence i know Knows me by name, the Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always, your mercy is mighty, age after age, and all generations will bow down and praise the Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. your grace the god of creation knows me by name the lord is faithful yesterday now and always always your mercy is mighty age after age and all generations will bow down and praise the lord is faithful yesterday now guys can be seated. We're getting ready to have another baptism this morning. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning for that.
Come a long way since last Sunday, I just want you to know. <laughs> My goodness. Hey, you guys look good this morning. How's everybody doing? Good? Good? I heard y'all singing up here. It sounded pretty good. The Lord has been good. The Lord's been gracious to us. Uh, you know, if you'll just look around, uh, if you'll just stop at some point during the day and take a little inventory, you'll see just how good God has been to you. You can see the blessings there everywhere. And an opportunity that you and I have to be here to worship together this morning, that's another blessing. So I, I want you to take just a second, look at the person on your right and on your left, and say thank you for being a blessing to me. So last week, uh, you may remember we had a baptism, and we're blessed. Uh, I, I just want to say we're we're blessed. We we don't go many Sundays without having baptisms. God's been so very good. Uh, he's He's saving people. They're being born again, washed by the blood, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're, they're being given a, a rock to stand on. The Bible says that He is our rock. And when you get saved, I want you to know you've got solid footing. You're going to go through life now. Getting saved is not going to get you out of anything. You're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. You're going to deal with tragedies. You're going to be faced with challenges. All of that still applies to the believer. But the difference is what you're standing on when those things happen. Amen. And for the believer... You go into a crisis standing on a rock. You go into a challenge. You, you face a difficult decision while standing on a rock. At the same time, not only are you standing on a rock, but you're filled with the Spirit of God. People that you love are going to leave this earth. But because the Spirit of God lives you, the Bible says that you have a, a hope that when you grieve, you grieve with hope. We have a different way of walking through life as believers. Christ literally changes everything. He changes everything. Even eternity is changed because of Christ and the difference that He makes in our lives. And I want to tell you something. You may be here and you are not standing on a rock. You may be here and you are not filled with the Spirit of God. You may be here and you are fearful of the future... Because you don't know what's going to happen for your eternity. And so I'm telling you that the Bible says today is the day of salvation. There's no need for you to wait. God certainly isn't interested in you putting Him off. He put His Son on the cross so that you could accept Him today. Grace is always extended. The Bible says that this gift of salvation is available. And today can be the day that you say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of standing on something that is always giving, always moving, always shaking. I'm tired of living with an emptiness inside. I'm, I'm tired of living and feeling desperately alone all the time. I'm tired of being fearful of what's going to happen after I die. Well, then you are a candidate for grace. You're a candidate to be saved. And the Bible puts it so very simply that you must confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you must believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead. And the Bible says, and you will be saved. I'm not going to muddy up the water that God has made crystal clear. It's, it's no more challenging. It's no more difficult than that. It's simple. The gospel is not complicated. God is not trying to make it hard for people to get saved. He put His Son on the cross. Christ did the hard things so that we could by faith accept the work that God has done on our behalf. And if you need to be saved, if you need to be born again, if you need to be filled with the Spirit of God, if you need to be forgiven of sin, if you need to be adopted into the Father's family, made a son or daughter of a king, then you need to confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Believe in your heart. He is alive because on the third day He was raised to life. 
He defeated death. And because Christ lives, I will live with him. And then you need to tell somebody. Tell me, tell anybody. And then uh, you need to get baptized. And that's what we're doing this morning. You know, baptism is not a, a, it's not a seal of your salvation. The Bible says that the spirit of God's presence in your life is the seal of your salvation. Uh, it's not a part of your salvation. Uh, you've been saved by faith and through the grace of God. This water adds nothing to it. Baptism is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to express publicly, I have identified with Christ. I am unashamed. I have recognized the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, and in my being baptized, I am exemplifying my death and burial and resurrection as well into everlasting life. Baptism is an opportunity for you to be obedient. And you should be in obedient to God's word in every way. Okay, this isn't the only way. But scripture clearly gives this as an indication of a believer's willingness to obey. In other words, scripture puts baptism this way. If you're not willing to do this, how do we know that you're willing to do anything else? If you're not willing to take this step, that's publicly a piece of evidence that shows us as believers, you're in. How, how can we expect you to be in, to be there when, when times are tough? If you can't get wet, what, what are you going to do when things get hard, when things are challenging? And so this is not something to put off, and it's not something to make an excuse for. I have to be very clear and honest with you as a preacher of God's Word. If you have been saved, you need to be baptized. You don't have to be. You're still going to go to heaven. But you need to be. It's good for you, and it's good for us too. Because I don't know about you, but I get encouraged when people get baptized. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all getting excited about this right here? Praise the Lord. I am too. I am too. Jesse, come on down. You know, the ones that got baptized last week are jealous. <laughs> it's warm, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's warmer in your bath water, y'all. This is nice. And for those that have been baptized in colder water, all I can say is, I'm sorry. I was freaking out all week long. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be cold. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is uh, Miss Jessie. Uh, everybody say, hey, Jessie. Hey, Jessie. <laughs> Uh, Jesse and her family uh, have been coming here. They actually, before they moved several years ago, they were here. They have some family connections here uh, with Miss Ruth Childers. Ruth, where are you at? She hadn't seen her. Okay. Well, Miss Ruth, uh, this is her. Let's see. Let me see if I can get this right. Her great granddaughter-in-law. There you go. <laughs> Uh, but I'm so thankful. Jesse, last Sunday, uh, was here, and God began to speak to her. He had been working on her, been convicting her, and then uh, he, he pressed in a little bit harder, and I'm so thankful that she responded to the conviction of the Spirit of God, uh, accepted salvation. But Jesse, I just wanted to give you an opportunity. If you'd just like to share anything with these folks, uh, I want you to go ahead and do so. <clears throat> I just want to thank the Lord for not giving up on me. I thought I was saved when I was 12. Um, but back in January, he started convicting me, and I couldn't sleep. I would have nightmares, and it, I was so terrified to go to sleep because I knew that if I died, I wasn't going to heaven. And... He just kept on and kept on. And Sunday, I just, I was just like, God, just please take everything. Just save me and make me a new person. And this week has been the best week of my life. 
There's, there's no doubt, and I told Jesse this, that people here this morning need to hear this. Uh, we have a lot of people that watch online. There's probably people watching now that need to hear this, um, need to be reminded. A lot, a lot of people are under the false impression that they're saved because someone told them they were saved. Listen, if you have to be reminded that you're saved, if, if you can't remember your salvation... That's a pretty good indication that you've not had salvation. Because when God shows up, you, it's not something that you can forget. When God moves in your life, when you are totally cleansed of sin, when you're forgiven, when the blood is applied and the Spirit of God comes, listen to me. That's not something that somebody has to help jog your memory. I'm, I'm, listen, <laughs> that ain't God. When God comes, you know. When God moves, you know. And the most important thing that you can do before you leave this earth is know that you have had an encounter with God and that He has saved you by His grace and through His Son. All the church attendants in the world ain't going to save you. You've got to accept Him for yourself. All the good works that you can amass will not save you. Other people thinking that you're saved, like a lot of people, everybody thought Jesse was saved. That did not save her. All that saved her was God when she responded to him and said, I must be saved. You've got to do this work. I know what's going to happen if you don't. And I need you. Save me. And that's when you get saved, folks. That's when it happens. And so there's some people here, people watching. Listen, if you need to be born again, you better not be shy about it because eternity is a very, very, very long time. It's a long time. I encourage you, make arrangements so that you can spend it with Jesus. Go ahead and start following Him. I'm going to tell you something else that doesn't save you. Coming down, praying a prayer. What, what saves you is real faith. There's a lot of people walk to aisle and pray to prayer and they weren't born again. It is, it's real faith. It's not routine it's not religion. It's not a process. It's an encounter with the living God. That's right. We're not going to try and formulate it because it's not supposed to be. But I just feel like it's so important right now, in this very moment, for you to hear what Jesse said. Because there's some people here likely in those same heart places that she was in last week don't 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 you dare let what other people think or don't think affect what you do concerning your eternity uh, praise god listen if a true believer sees you get born again they're not going to say well i thought you they're going to shout and celebrate and they're going to say hallelujah you got it Jesse called me Sunday night. It's about ten o'clock. Called me Sunday night. Told me, and over the I couldn't help it. I don't know if she heard me or not, but I got so excited listening to her, I started laughing. And I said, "She got the goods. She got it. She got the real stuff, not the fluff. She got the real thing." And I want everybody in here. I want you to get the real thing. It's your eternity, and it's going to have to be your salvation. Which means it's going to come through your faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all getting ready to see something wonderful. We're going to find out how many people we can fit inside a baptistry at the same time. 
because Jesse has grown up in a, a family of preachers, and I couldn't dare imagine doing this without getting them involved. And uh, I, I said, call your grandpa. And she said, what about my daddy? And I said, well, I don't know him as well, but call him too. And I said, we love to have a husband in the water when the wife gets baptized. I said, we're going to see. She said, how many people can fit in that water? I said, we're going to find out. So uh, this is an experiment. Based on what happens, water may or may not come over. Uh, we're just going to have to see. All right, Jeff, come on down. This Baptist is bigger than y'all thought, isn't it? Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll we'll introduce everybody. Jesse, you tell tell everybody who we've got here with you in the water. This is my dad, and this is my grandpa, and this is my husband. <laughs> yeah. Give these folks a hand. Bless God. <laughs> You know, this is a good example of what happens uh, in a lot of homes uh, because there's, there's a pressure that is felt by a child in the home where everybody's a preacher um, to, to get saved. Um, and there's an expectation. Uh, we have to be careful as strong Christians, whether you're a preacher or not, whether you're in ministry or not, because we're parents. Uh, as a parent, we have to be very careful how we handle our children's future and their eternity and their faith. We, we want them to be saved. I want my children to be born again. If I could snap my fingers and make it happen, you know, I probably would, but it doesn't work that way. But here's what I don't want. I don't want one of my children to walk an aisle because they want to make me happy or because they think I'm disappointed. I don't want them to kneel down and pray a prayer. Because they're worried about what other people think since they're a preacher's kid. And I'm thankful, uh, Jeff and, and Tim, I'm thankful that Jesse, even though she made a, a, an early profession, what I'm really thankful for is that when she got it right, y'all were the first people she wanted to talk to. And that tells me that she was raised in, in the right situation spiritually where the real expectation is, honey, it's got to be yours. It's got to be your faith. And that she felt like she could, could contact them first and say, I finally got saved. Uh, I think is a tremendous testimony Amen. to your family. Yep. Uh, and so I, I commend you for that. Thank you yep. for that. Thank you. I'll never yeah. forget. Yep. T Tim, Jeff, anything y'all would like to yep. share? I just thank the Lord for saving me. and Thank you for working in my life and working in Jesse's life. You know, you pray as a father and as a mother pray for your children and you know that's the goal in life is to lead them to the cross lead them to salvation that moment in time where the Lord Jesus Christ deals with their heart and they become birthed into the family of God you know Jesus said that verily verily I say unto you told Nicodemus except a man be born again he shall not see the kingdom of God and I thank God for the new birth thank God for being there and the privilege of having a child and the birth in itself. I wasn't there during my birth, but I was there during Jesse's birth. And what a miracle she was just to be born into this world. But thank God more important than that. I was there in her new birth when the Lord Jesus Christ in his time, and that's key for him, in his time dealt with her heart and reached down and saved her. And, you know, she called me Sunday night and said, Daddy, and just began to tell me what she told y'all about her being miserable. And she came over to the house. And, you know, it, it, what a privilege and what an honor. Tim preached last week about salvation and about, you know, the experiences he had in his life leading others to Christ and to lead your own child to the Lord Jesus Christ and show her in the Scriptures how she can know that she can pass some from 
death to life and be born of the Spirit of God. What a Savior, amen. amen. What a Lord we serve. I tell you, I'm excited this morning because God is so good. Amen. He is good. <laughs> and, you know, we fight the best thing that could ever happen to us. Now, we're by nature, the Bible says, the children of wrath. You know, our little kids and grandkids, we don't have to teach them to do wrong. It's in them, amen. It's in them to do wrong. But thank God Jesus paid the price on Calvary for our sins. Thank God he gave us an opportunity to repent. And, and praise God for the day that he deals with you one-on-one. -on -one. He's a personal Savior. He's a good God. And when he can deal with our heart one-on-one -on -one and through the precious Holy Spirit of God, speak to us and reveal to us we need him. Yeah. If it had been any other way, friend, Jesus wouldn't have let his son die on the old rugged cross for us. We just went through Easter. Isaiah 52 said his visage, his image, and those that beheld him on the cross was so marred he didn't even resemble a man. He was beaten beyond recognition. His bones were exposed in his side, the psalmist recorded. And he died there on Calvary. Not because he done anything wrong. Not because he was guilty. There was no sin in him. He was perfect and holy in every way. But because he bore my sin and your sin. Thank God for the day that the Holy Spirit let you realize you need to be born again. You need to be saved. I tell you, my heart rejoices. And not only that, Jesse being saved and then... Uh, what Thursday night, uh, Payson got saved and made a profession of faith. Thank God, friend. God is so good. That's right. I could I could tell you stories and share with you all day, but don't don't turn him away. Amen. Don't turn him away. The greatest thing you'll ever know in this life is when you know Jesus as your personal Savior. Thank you, brother. He'll give you peace that passeth understanding. He'll give you love that'll fill your heart to overflow it. I tell you, he's a good God. Yes. I praise his name. I, thank you. I'll be long-winded, but I, I thank you. Thank Tim, you got anything that you'd like to friend. say? He's got a lot of faith to get yeah. three, two preachers yep. up here. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. We lost a big part of our family a mm. year ago. We love the kids, grandkids, fight for them. Mm. I know she's looking down yes. today. Yes, She's happy. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let him say. Amen. It is. It is true. Uh, not not many preachers would see how many other preachers they get to water at the same time. <laughs> but I, I actually enjoy opportunities like this. Uh, you know our heart, and it's the heart of our church as well. It's to do it together. Build the kingdom together. Celebrate together. Worship together. Uh, pray together. Love one another. Uh, and this is uh, just another physical piece of evidence to the heart that God's given us, uh, to our church. Uh, to invite, to welcome, to embrace, to want other believers to be uh, a part of what God is doing. And I, I'm so I'm thankful. It's an honor. That's a mini revival. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I'm thankful to have both of y'all here. And uh, I'm, I'm actually going to step Thank to the you, side. I, this is their daughter and granddaughter. And I'm not going to rob them of the honor uh, of doing the baptism itself. I'm just going to stand here and witness it like the rest of you. But y'all, when she comes up out of that water, you know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. Go ahead. Y'all come on up here and leave the water. I don't care. Tim, usually what yeah. I do is put your hand behind her. Yeah. And then you yeah. take her on the I front. Turn this way. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. She can't see me. Yeah, go the it's, the it's the test yeah. right here. It's yeah. the true test. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll get her in there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, God's good. Yeah. Jesse, because you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, in obedience to the Lord's command and the Holy Scripture, <laughs> I have the privilege to baptize you, my sister, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. feel like uh, she saw what God had done in her mom's life. You know, when there's, when there's a light that starts shining, uh, it's, it's hard not to see it. When somebody starts glowing, you know what I mean? Hey, hard to ignore. Uh, and I, I love that a, a mother, a parent, has the ability just by living for Christ, just by the transformation that comes through faith. Uh, can have that kind of influence on their children. And Payson, I want you to know we're all so very excited for yeah. you. Thank you. Y'all give this young lady a hand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that you are getting to be baptized on the same day as Mama, I think what is super that? duper special. Hallelujah. Yes. And there's a lot of people here yep. uh, celebrating with you. Yep. And so we're going to go ahead. Uh, Dylan, I, I want you... To, you come up right here, yep. and you're going to stand, come here, darling. You're going to stand right there behind her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we're going to let, we're going to let Papa and, and great Papa help, and Daddy's yep. going to be right here. Just a reminder, the reason why we get a father involved is because we want to, to illustrate what God has spiritually commanded, yep. which is for a a father, a husband, is the spiritual leader of his home. He's anointed by God to be the spiritual leader of his home. And, and mom has an important role. They do it together, of course. But that I want you to know. God says you're supposed to lead the way. You're supposed to be the lead follower of following Jesus. You're supposed to be the lead servant of serving others. You're supposed to be the lead sacrificial person in your home of being the first person to, to lay it down for the betterment of others. You're supposed to be the first lover in your home that, that you love those in your home no matter what. Um, you, you're the example. And the Bible says that your family needs you to be that example. And so, Payson, your dad's participation here is because he is he's going to help you and disciple you and pray with you and love you all along the way as you follow Jesus. And so that's why we definitely want our daddies uh, involved in these baptisms, okay? All right, are you ready? Ready you ready, girl? All right, right. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Payson, because you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in obedience to the Lord's command and the Holy Scripture, I have the privilege to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. interested in being baptized, uh, this water is going to stay warm for the 11 o'clock service as well. Amen. So I want to encourage you, you're welcome to come to me after the first service and say I need to be baptized. And We've got the clothes and towels already here, you really don't need anything. Uh, you can be, there's another one of them grandbabies ready to get in the water too. <laughs> Folks, let's stand to our feet. I'm going to pray and then you guys are going to worship some more with our praise team. Bless God, it's good. Aren't you thankful? Let's pray together. Lord, 
We thank you that we get to celebrate with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you. We get to witness their faith being publicly exhibited. We thank you for your good and gracious work. We thank you for salvation. And we know that it came at a cost, not to us, but to you. So Jesus, thank you for making a way. Thank you for being the way. And thank you that you willingly gave your life so that you could give us eternal life. Lord, that all who are here that would hear the gospel would accept it, would embrace it, so that they could be with you forever and ever. We're going to worship you, Lord, because you're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I believe we had church, haven't we already? Praise God. Let's give him some glory this morning. I want you guys to worship with your hearts right now. God's been so good to us. So good to us. And whatever's going on in your life right now, if you're just heavy, you, the altar's always open when we're singing. You don't have to wait till any other invitation. It's always open. And if God's dealing with your heart, don't put it off. Maybe he wants to save somebody right now. Maybe he just wants someone to say, hey, I've been dealing with some things. I don't want to come back to you, Lord. I've wandered off. Whatever the situation, listen to what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
He loves the praise of his people. He's here. He's here. Oh. says we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength, and we're to love our brothers and sisters the same. Listen, we can't do that unless we have the Holy Spirit living within us. It's impossible. We can't do it unless we're letting Him lead us if we haven't. Let's worship Him this morning. The altar's open. I heard it broken. Come to the end of yourself. Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with. The precious blood of Jesus Christ Come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ
was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Jesus is calling uh, Folks, I want to introduce to you Your new sister in Christ <laughs> Miss Kinsley Laws um, she, she told me a moment ago, she said, I, I was under conviction that I wasn't saved because she had made a profession. She said, but now today I know that I am. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so, so thankful. Y'all just stay here for a second because we're going to pray. I, I'm so thankful that if you are willing to be led... The Spirit of God will lead. If you, are, if you are willing to respond, the Spirit of God will move. If you're willing to listen, the Spirit of God speaks. You see, God wants to do a work in every man's life. A transformative work. But so many resist it. As our brother said earlier in the service, so many resist the very best thing that could ever happen to them. Can I just say don't resist it? Not anymore. The Spirit of God is leading you to know Him through His Son. The Spirit of God leading you to repent Repent and be saved. He's not leading you into a bad thing. He loves you too much to lead you in the wrong direction. He's leading you to the best thing. Himself, His presence, His embrace, His love. That's what He's leading you to. That's what you get when you get salvation. You don't get some religious stamp of approval. You get a relationship with the one who made you. With the one who's given you life. And now with the one who gives you eternal life. So I want us to sing uh, that bridge again. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. And let's worship the Lord. And if you need to respond, look here. Miss Kinsley came down. This is a living testimony that you can come down to. Matter of fact, if you come down, I'm going to let your new sister in Christ pray with you as you accept salvation. We're going to pray over you. And we're going to bless you as a new member of the family of God. Amen? Amen. Let's let the Lord lead today. Go ahead. Oh, what a Savior, isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord. Sing a 
some people that want to sing. Amen. 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 Um, I want us to have a time of prayer and I want us to pray for our three new sisters in Christ, two of which we've seen baptized and one of which you've seen make a public profession here in front of you. And here's what I want you to pray as a follower of Christ, because you're a believer. Those of you who are saved, you know what it's like. You know the challenges and you know that the, the enemy wants to come quickly and, and try and destroy a good work that God is doing. He wants to try and silence the one who's been born again. And so I want you to pray mindful of that. The early church had a wonderful prayer. It was a short prayer. They said, Lord, give us boldness. They said, Lord, you hear their threats. Lord, you know that we've got an enemy that's after us. And they didn't pray, give us a way out. They, they didn't pray, give us somewhere else to go. They said, give us boldness. I'm telling you, it's a good thing for the church to pray for boldness. You need it too. You need it. And I'm not talking about the kind of boldness where you can quickly tell someone what you think. I'm not talking about the boldness where you're going to express your opinion. I'm not talking about the boldness where you're going to tell them who they ought to vote for. That's not the boldness I'm talking about. That's not the boldness that they were praying for either. They were praying for boldness to proclaim one name. No matter what. To preach one gospel, no matter what. To move forward, no matter who tried to stand in their way. That's the boldness that they were praying for. And God answered. He gave it to them. The Bible says he shook the place where they were praying. Oh, my. I feel like he might be shaking us a little bit here today. I feel like, you know what, we need a good shaking. I know, I know we need it. The church needs a good shaking up. We need to be filled with boldness by the Lord. Let's pray together. Bow our heads and begin to pray for your new sisters, Miss Jessie, Miss Payson, Miss Kinsley. And as you feel led, pray beyond the boldness. The Spirit of God may be leading you to specifically pray on their behalf in a certain way. Please be attentive to that. The Bible tells us that he knows exactly how we ought to pray, what we should pray for. You could very honestly say, Lord, I don't personally know these three sisters of mine, but you do. Tell me exactly how you want me to pray for them and I will. And he's so good, he'll lead you to pray especially for them. He knows what they need. He knows their weaknesses. He knows what lies ahead. I want you to pray for others who may be here even now that are lost. I want you to pray for those who are going to be here for our second service, the ones who are lost. Pray for heavy heavy conviction Lord weigh them down with the knowledge of their need for you weigh them down 
with the burden of their lostness. Weigh them down so that they may feel as though they could take not one more step without Christ. Save, save those who are lost. God, that they might be cleansed and forgiven. God, save those who are lost so that they might be filled with your spirit. God, save those who are lost so that their path would not end in destruction, but instead in your presence. Please, Lord. Father, give us boldness. If those first believers needed it, we can admit that we do too. Give us boldness. Boldness for the kingdom and its king. Boldness for the gospel and its truth. Boldness for the name of Jesus and the power of his name. Boldness in spite of the enemy. Boldness in the face of of challenges boldness that doesn't stop when it's resisted boldness that moves our hands and our feet but especially our hearts in the direction of others boldness to be different and radical in this world Lord, that we would be so bold that we would have no other great aim other than to exalt you. We would have no great purpose other than to bring you glory. No great desire other than to see your kingdom furthered. No greater interest other than your will being accomplished. Give us that kind of boldness and no other. Thank you for our sisters that you've saved by grace. Thank you for your intentions in their lives. Thank you for your spirit living in them. Thank you for your desires to accomplish through them great things for your glory. Lord, we pray boldness for them. We pray liberty and freedom for them. We pray victory for them. We pray that they would devour your word. We pray that they would grow in their faith and in their knowledge of you, that they would be built up in wisdom. We pray that they would walk a path of righteousness And Lord, I pray that you would use all three of them like you've used them today. They have blessed us. Their faith encourages our own. And their boldness challenges us to be bolder. Thank you, Lord for using our three sisters. Bless the rest of our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, give the Lord a hand, y'all. Praise the Lord. Um, 
I'm going, you wouldn't believe the short message that I'm fixing to preach. But I want you to spend the next 30 seconds shaking hands and encouraging one another and prepare yourselves for the preaching of the word. Bless your brother. Thank you. At the end, would you just meet some, um, somebody sing it after the church today about getting together to help clean up some stuff in Samaritan. Okay. All right, get your Bibles ready. Get your Bibles ready. Go ahead and prepare yourself. Get it right where it belongs. And just as a reminder, we do this not because we have to. We do this because we want to. We boldly recognize the authority of of scripture over us I have no authority over scripture it has authority over me the Bible is God's Word it has authority in my life the Bible changes me I don't change the Bible amen go ahead and turn to Ephesians 5 we're gonna read three verses from it very thankful for this series that the Lord's going to allow me to preach for the next few weeks. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 15, and we'll read verses 16 and 17 as well. You keep working towards the end of that Bible, get past First and Second Corinthians, you're getting close. You got one book in between. Galatians, it'll pass by about two flips and you're at Ephesians. Find Ephesians 5, 15, 16, and 17. Are you ready? This is what the Bible says. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen? Amen. That's the word of God. You can be seated. Today, we're going to begin a series very simply titled, Lessons for Life. Over the course of my walk with the Lord, which began on September 27th, 1995, I've learned a lot. The greatest things that I've learned, I've learned through his word. The greatest lessons that God has taught me have come through his word. Now, he has also taught me in other ways. He's taught me through holding one of my babies. He's taught me through walking with other people as they experienced the hardest of challenges. He's taught me through getting my hands in the dirt at the farm. He's taught me through hard work and blood and sweat, sacrifice. He's taught me from others and the example that they've set. I wonder what God wants to teach you. I wonder what kind of lessons that he wants to share with you, things that he wants to show you, advice that he offers, counsel that he wants to give. I wonder if you're willing to learn these lessons, lessons that will make for a better life, a life filled with satisfaction and peace, lessons that will allow you to avoid the consequences that others have incurred because they would not learn the lesson. You know, they do say some people have to learn the hard way. Well, I want you to know God's way of teaching is not the hard way. 
Sin and its consequences and learning that way. Now, that's the hard way. But God offers a better way. God wants to teach those who would listen. He, he wants to counsel those who would be receptive to his words. And there are lessons that the Lord wants to teach us for life. The purpose of God wanting to teach you something is not just to build you up with knowledge and now you know another verse and now you have another precept and now you understand another truth. But the, the purpose is actually much deeper than that. God says, I want to teach you lessons for life so that you can live according to the things that you're learning. I want to teach you simple truths. And if you go back especially and read the preachings and teachings of Jesus, you'll see that he didn't get complicated. He taught, he preached, he shared so that people who wanted to understand could. People who wanted to give him an ear could get what he was saying. Because he wanted them to get the truth that would give them freedom that they could apply in their life. He wanted them to get the message that would make a change in how they treated somebody else. He, he wanted them to swallow the words so that those words would settle down deep within them and have an impact in how they walked and how they talked, how they expressed and expensed themselves in their lives. It's the same for you. God wants to teach you. And his word, I mean, it's full and overflowing. The best way, by the way, out of all the ways that we talk about learning lessons, and we do learn a great many ways, the best way that God gives us is his word. The best way for you to learn is through the word, not through experience, not through someone else's mistakes, not through holding something tangible. The best way for you to learn life's lessons is from the Word of God. As a matter of fact, everything that he wants you to know, it's, it's here. It's right here. And if you will invite God's Word into your life in heavy and consistent doses, kind of like when you're really sick and you want to get better, or kind of like me, when you get a horrible case of poison oak and they give you them little steroid pills and they say, now you got to take this every day. You better believe I'm going to take it every day because I want to get rid of the problem, right? Well, the problems in our lives, the way we get rid of them is by taking in the word of God consistently and letting him teach us. By the way, these are going to be kept short and simple because we have so many kids in our fellowship. I'm especially mindful of them because I want them to remember these things because these are the lessons that we should be teaching our young people. These are the lessons that I want to have been taught when I was young, the, the lessons that you say, yep, I would have loved to have heard that sooner. And so you kids, listen up. This, this is not going to be something that's just for mom and dad. These are lessons for you as well. Let's get started. I'm going to share a couple and then we're going to be done. I'm not going to get all the way through this message and I'm learning. I'm learning to be okay with that. But I'm learning. I have not arrived. Life lesson number one. Life is short. Love people. I'm probably just going to get this one covered today. You know, this is a saying that you may have heard before. It may be something that someone very wise shared with you at some point in your past. The Lord really spoke the importance of this life lesson very recently into my life. I mean, I've, I've, I've known this, but it was literally just two days ago that God showed me the importance of this life lesson. Like, I really am, David. I'm just trying to get you to do this better. I'm, I'm not trying to get you to do everything. You're not capable of doing everything. I've not called you to do everything. 
but you've got to do this part better. Life is short. Love people. We have a sister in our fellowship whose younger brother passed away last week. I was at that funeral service down in Yadkin County. And the funeral home was absolutely full. This was a 31-year-old young man. And I'm, I'm just breaking. I, I, I'd never met him. I mean, the connection that I had is through his sister that comes here. I'd never met him. And I'm breaking for all of these people. I'm breaking for this family. And I'm breaking for the one who isn't there. I'm breaking for a 31-year-old man whose life is being memorialized. And the only thing that comes to my mind is how much difference would love make right now in these people's lives? Like, what, what could I really give them? I don't know them. They don't know me. But I could love them. I can love them in how I look at them. I can love them in how I pray for them. I can love them in how I speak to them. I can love them with maybe just a handshake or an embrace. I can love them. And, and the Lord was just, just working in me. What would Jesus do if he were in that place? He would love those people. In their hurt, in their grief, in their, in their struggling with what has happened, he would love those people. I want you to know, there's a lot of things that are going to try and prop themselves up in front of you as saying, pick me, I'm the most important thing you should do with your life. But don't let anything replace the importance of loving people. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that it was the second commandment just like the first. The first commandment being love the Lord. He said the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus then spoke to his disciples later in his ministry and he said, A new commandment I give to you. As I have loved you. Love one another. This is what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. You want to know why you need to love people? Because God loves people. You want to know why you need to be good to people? Because God's good to people. You, you want to know why you need to look at people and see something of value? Because God said they're so valuable, I'll put my son on the cross to save them. You want to know why you need to love people? Because they're made in the image of God. And the Bible says that you ought to love people because that's one of the markers of someone that knows God. That one who professes to know God will love others. And if somebody professes to know God yet does not love others, the Bible says they do not know God. The best way for you to see that I've got a relationship with him is in how I treat you. How I treat others. To love you. To look at you. Appreciate you. Recognize you. Value you. Respect you. To love you. Now this love that we're supposed to have is not flippant. It's not cheap. It's the kind of love that requires investment. It's the kind of love where, where you've got to spend some time thinking about how you're going to do it and why you're going to do it and why you want to do it and why you ought to do it. And it's also not the kind of love that just comes so very naturally. It's, 
It's not the love that you get naturally for your children. It's the kind of love that you've got to yearn for, strive for, and desire because this love comes from above. This is the love that God has for you that he wants to express through you to other people. This is the love that bears light into a dark world. Listen, life is short. It's short. You're going to spend it. One way or another, you might as well spend it loving people. I can't believe how short life can be. The Bible says it's a vapor. I want to spend my life loving people. I want to spend my life loving you. I want to spend my life loving my family. I want to spend my life loving others. I don't want to spend my life thinking about how horrible everything is. I don't want to spend my life thinking about what everybody's doing wrong. I don't want to spend my life pointing out what everybody's doing wrong. I really don't. I want to spend my life loving people. I want to spend my life preaching the good news. And it's good news. <laughs> it's the best news. I want to spend my life being a benefit and a blessing to the people that God puts around me because life is short. You're not going to be here forever. You're going to spend eternity somewhere, but you only get to do this thing right here one time. And then it's over. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 21. Whoever pursues righteousness and unfailing love will find life, righteousness, and honor. In other words, God says if you pursue the right thing, you're going to get some good results. If, if you live about the right thing, you're going to be rewarded. Maybe not with stuff now. Nobody's paying you for love, all right? But God has a way to reward you for pursuing what is right. And he says, if you're going to pursue righteousness, and that means right living, and unfailing love, then you're going to find life. What comes along with that? Well, Jesus said that the kind of life that, that you'll find is abundant. It's full. It's whole. That kind of life has peace that tags along with it. That kind of life gives stability so that you're not all the time shaking. Not everything moves you because you've got life, you've got peace, you've got hope. It says you're going to find righteousness. In other words, pursuing it will help you to find it. It says and you're going to find honor. In other words, people appreciate someone who spends their time loving others. People recognize someone who is devoted to loving others. We appreciate people that love us, don't we? People that really love us. Don't you appreciate them? Aren't you thankful for them? Love people. Last thing I'm going to say, and then I've got to be done because I have to make a couple of announcements. We're already going to be late for Sunday school. It's all right. Just tell them it's the preacher's fault. I will suffer the consequences. Um, there, there really are people they're on a knife's edge. People in our community, maybe even people in our family, maybe even people in our church. They're right there. And in their minds, they could go either way. You won't go wrong loving them. It might make the difference. If there's someone here who is struggling with, with these things, with the, the importance or purpose or point of life 
I want you to know that you're loved. The Lord loves you. And I love you. And there's other people that love you too. And if we've not done a good job of expressing that, just give us more time. Give us another opportunity. But you are needed. We want you to stay. And we want to see God work in your life. We want to see him use you because he will. But you got to stick around for that to happen. You have a purpose. There is a point. And don't forget that, that you are you are deeply loved. I guess if I want to teach my children any of these life lessons that we're going to cover for the next few weeks, this one's got to be the most important. I mean, who cares what else we do if we can't love people? Who cares what all we know if we can't love people? I want to be a part of a church that really loves people. For the glory of the Lord, for the sake of the gospel. Because life is short, love people. Amen? Amen. Let me pray with you, please. Father, I want to thank you for... This wonderful time of worship that you've given us today. I thank you for that hot water and our sisters being baptized. I thank you for a wonderful time of worship. I'm thankful for the freedom that we have in this place where we're we're not stiff and rigid, but we're flexible, pliable. And we come here searching for you with all our hearts because you tell us if we'll do that, we'll find you. We come here with a purpose to worship you, to focus on you. Because we know how much we need you. I thank you for our new sister in Christ that committed herself to you today and accepted the greatest of gifts. I thank you for our time of prayer, how we prayed for one another, for the boldness that we need. I thank you for our time of preaching. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the lessons that you long to teach your people. And I thank you for reminding us today that we only get one chance, one life. And we ought to love people all the way through it. Lord, help me to love, to genuinely love people like you. Help me to express that love in the way that I look at them speak to them, and in how I treat them. Help me to gladly, willfully love people that I don't know, people I've never met. Help me also to love people who will not love me in return. You sure have done that a lot, Lord. And you do tell us, that we're supposed to be like you. Help us to love, Lord. I want to thank you for your love and how it was expressed in the greatest of ways. The Bible says that you demonstrated, Father, your love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus, there's no doubt. You love us. Thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we're going to have to make this somewhat quick. Uh, it's been real good, but we got, we got more things to do. So uh, Chris and Leroy and Ellen, if y'all will stand, please.
Uh, you are aware of the recent storm that we had here in our community, Samaritan's Purse, which is based in part here locally. Uh, they have set up an operation to do work here. If you would like to be involved in helping do some of the cleanup work and ministry in this area right here in Wilkes where you live in the following week, over the next several days, at the end of this service, I would like for you to speak with them. If you three want to go ahead and hop over this way as people go out, they can, they can catch you and ask questions if they have any. I'm thankful for Samaritan's Purse. Y'all don't know how thankful I am for Samaritan's Purse. Bless God for Samaritan's Purse. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a sign of things to come. God is going to be moving and shifting a lot of things here in our area over the next several years, and he's used them to get it started, no doubt, but more is on the way. Um, I also want to let you know about our VBS. Tracy, you'll have to forgive me for not doing a big thing. Uh, we, we need you to sign up for VBS. We need you to volunteer for VBS. Uh, we need you to ask questions about VBS so that you can get answers about VBS. We need you to be praying for VBS. Benita, please stand up. Uh, Miss Benita is leading our prayer team, and of course, Tracy, stand up. She's our, our director. If you have any questions on how you can get involved, please ask Miss Tracy. If you have any questions on how you can pray and how you can be a part of that effort, please ask Miss Benita. Now, I feel like there was a third thing I was supposed to remember. Huh? Yeah, well, that is important, isn't it? We're putting up the tent Saturday. We need your help. God bless you in advance for coming and helping put up that monstrosity. I'm telling you, many hands make light or work somewhat lighter. It'll still be heavy, but a little lighter than it would have been. Uh, we've got two of our brother missionaries here with us this morning, uh, Ram Angad from Guyana. Go ahead and stand up, brother. You'll give him a hand doing great work in Guyana. And Brother Crane, if you would stand up. This is Bryant Crane from South Africa. So, thank, so thankful for the work that both of y'all are doing, and, uh, and God bless you. As a matter of fact, let's stand to our feet, and let's bless our brothers in their ministry as we extend a hand in their direction. Also, go ahead and extend a hand in the direction of those that were saved and baptized. Y'all, what happens if good gets gooder? What's after gooder? Because that's the direction we're heading in right now, no doubt about it. Good's getting gooder, and then whatever's after it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.